Gavin and I'm a professional grower. I grow uh, organic vegetables for a community project. I'm on a, an apprenticeship scheme at the moment, which means that I uh, grow the vegetables while learning on the job predominantly. So I learn um, a lot from my boss, my mentor, who's the, the main grower for the project. And then we have weekends uh, away where we go to seminars and workshops and farm walks and talks uh, and just learn from the pros out there that are actually doing the job for real. We're currently on our way uh, for a weekend in Manchester and Sheffield where we hope to learn about some of the best ways uh, to get started as independent organic growers. Yeah, looking forward to this weekend. Should be a good one. The ideal situation uh, to set up a, a, in business as a grower would be to, to be an independent grower but to be one of a cluster of independent growers all geographically close to each other you know sharing ideas and equipment and support and whatever and I thought we've got nine acres we can do that because nine acres is too big for one person to, to do intensive fruit and veg so we basically just divided this nine acre field up because it was just growing grass before just divided it up with newly planted hedges top to bottom side to side and there's four equal size plots and then each grower has uh, one plot and the use of one of the big polytunnels. On this field here, um, Hazelhurst fruit tree, that's three acres. It's fully, four years ago, we fully planted that field with a whole... So here we are, the apprentice growers. At this farm, we're meeting someone who's graduated recently from the Future Growers, which is the apprenticeship scheme that we're all on. My name's Nick Johnson. I'm an ex-apprentice in the Sword Association. Um, I've uh, recently taken over uh, one of the plots here. So, so is this your plot now? This is my plot. And where does it run from? So it runs just from where uh, you can see the purple sprout and broccoli, that hedge line there, um, which is under cover. And then all the way up, kind of to where that um, yeah, boat is. So it's 1.2 acres or half a hectare, isn't it? So it's quite, quite a substantial bit of land. Each of us uh, market gardeners basically rents out a uh, half hectare plot and a polytunnel and uh, the organic certification, uh, machinery use and uh, water borehole access. And uh, you can see we've got some uh, giant red mustard, rocket, uh, purple frills, Mitsuna. Nick also told us about all the different loans that he's had to take out just to get the project started, which has really highlighted for me the fact that you need to have a plan uh, of what you're doing with the produce that you're growing. Our next stop in Manchester will show us uh, an alternative uh, market for our produce. Well, we need to know what we're going to do with our stuff when we've grown it. It's all very well known how to grow lovely carrots, but then you need to be able to do something with them. So Unicorn Groceries is a working cooperative uh, grocery store selling produce uh, with uh, links directly with the actual producers, the actual farmers. The shop is so successful, we're always looking at what the price of the competition is in the supermarkets. So we, we have to, have to sell it at a, at a reasonable price, otherwise we're just not going to get people through the door. It's built on buying direct and in bulk from suppliers, so, we're, so again, we can negotiate a better price. So, a mutual understanding between the growers and the distributors is key if we really want to improve the food system. Unicorn Groceries knows its suppliers really well, um, and it also has first-hand experience of some of the hardships that uh, a grower faces. And where else are we going? Oh, there's a supporting farm, a farm which is, uh, has been set up to support Unicorn, um, Unicorn Groceries as a bit of a winter larder. So it's there, it will um, supply them anything that they need in that, that winter gap when you know sort of supply is potentially hard for them to get hold of organic vegetables of certain things they have that direct relationship with the with the grocery and so that they will be able to supply them with their kale or their savoy cabbages or whatever it is that they're having trouble sourcing so yeah it'd be really good to see their trials and tribulations of these farms it's a miserable day out there today it's raining it's cold it's, it's 
patches of snow on the ground still. But actually, once you've got your layers on and you're, you're fully waterproof, it's actually really nice. I, I still I find it very pleasant being out there. Um, like I say, as long as you're wrapped up properly, it's fine. It's good. It's 21 acres. We're stood in one corner of it. We want to feed into Unicorn and that whole model, and that is the challenge um, because Unicorn works off wholesale prices. Um, we've got uh, Royal Oak Organics down the road, probably the cheapest prices in the country um, as major competition. The, the difficulty is that vegetables don't really pay very well, so and that's that's where we're up to at the minute. So we um, and that's the stage we're at. We've we've made a loss of five years. We've had a lot of funding, a lot of help and so on but we and we're, we're still surviving we haven't gone out of business but we can so this visit has been a real eye-opener as just to how difficult um this business is um these guys have had some major loans to help them get set up and get started and still five years on they're still making a, a loss year on year um Despite all of this, it's been a really worthwhile trip. Rob's given us some amazing advice on some of the things we need to consider when we get started on our own. So as I said, when we took on the site, it was uh, two bare fields. And I'm kind of particularly keen to get the message across to future growers. Uh, if you can get a site, if you take it on a new site, if you can get one that's equipped already, I can't tell you how much of an advantage that is. So if, if, you, if, you, if you're a new grower and you're taking on a new site, be great if you've got the water, the electricity and the buildings already on site, you know, because that investment's been done previously. It will cost you more to buy bare land and put it in all yourself, I think. It's also just showing how there's all these different uh, different models, how, how the whole food system is being um, challenged basically the current food system is arguably very unsustainable and uh, unfair and so it's good to see these initiatives that are just trying to level level the playing field a little bit and make it um, yeah make it a, a, a viable business for newbie growers out there um, it can take a long time to get a growing business established and, and even breaking even never mind actually making money which uh, is obviously quite <laughs> disheartening you know when you're out sweating day and night in the in all weathers and you're still at a negative at the end of the year year on year for maybe 10 years uh, but there isn't there are these systems that are setting up to support us as growers to make it um, yeah make it a viable business opportunity um, this time two years ago I was uh, a struggling graphic designer and uh, desk bound and now I'm spending every day out in the all weathers, including days like today, um, growing vegetables, um, which I am so happy <laughs> that I've made this career change. It's, uh, it's not easy, it's hard work, and it's certainly not currently financially rewarding, but it's just uh, so rewarding in so many other ways. It's, it's a, a great thing, um, and I'm very happy to, to be doing what I'm doing now. <laughs>